Amyloidosis refers to a group of disorders in which misfolded proteins aggregate and deposit in various tissues. It's due to a variety of acquired or inherited conditions and is classified based on whether these insoluble protein fibrils cause systemic or localized disease. Pathophysiologically, amyloid deposits occur after normally soluble peptides become insoluble. This happens when they accidentally misfold into a beta-pleated sheet, allowing them to stack and eventually conform into a twisted fibrillar configuration. All of this might happen for a couple of reasons. One, a genetic mutation resulting in structural changes. Two, Issues with protein stabilization mechanisms like dysfunctional molecular chaperones. 3. Increased production of amyloid precursor proteins from chronic inflammation. Or 4. From decreased clearance of precursor proteins. Now, when describing and classifying these conditions, the standard nomenclature for naming amyloidosis is AX where A indicates amyloidosis, and the X is a representation of the protein present in the fibril. So let's just go through two examples, highlighting the fact that these are classified as systemic or localized diseases as well. AL refers to amyloid composed of immunolite chain. This condition arises from plasma cell disorders like myeloma. It can have multi-organ involvement, so it's classified as a type of systemic amyloidosis. Conversely, APRP stands for amyloid and prion protein, and it's specifically associated with CNS disease, causing clinical syndromes like spongy form encephalopathies. Thus, it's classified as a localized amyloidosis. The clinical features of amyloidosis are highly variable and very dependent on which organs are involved and what type of fibrils form in general. But let's just use amyloid light chain as an example to run through. AL can have kidney involvement specifically inside the glomerulus. This can cause a nephrotic syndrome. Subsequent proteinuria can result in often severe hypoalbuminemia and consequently cause significant pedal edema and even anisarca. Cardiac deposition often results in ventricular hypertrophy and diastolic dysfunction. Endocrine involvement can cause diverse sequelae from hypothyroidism to hypopituitarism. Hepatic involvement usually results in cholestasis, but has minimal alteration in intrinsic liver function. Now, in general, systemic amyloidosis is usually one heck of a disease, with many of them causing hepatic, endocrine, cardiac, and kidney issues. But now let's highlight a couple of the really specific classic features of AL although they only occur in roughly 10% of patients each time. T stands for a big tongue or macroglossia. This is a pathognomonic sign and occurs because of abnormal deposition of amyloid protein in the mouth. E stands for ecchymosis, which presents with the classic raccoon eyes. This occurs due to a deficiency of clotting factor 10 after amyloid fibrils bind to it and deplete a patient's normal reservoir. N stands for peripheral neuropathy, most commonly in the form of carpal tunnel syndrome. Investigations and diagnosis of amyloidosis revolves around histopathological identification of the amyloid deposits, mostly with a biopsy. Now, you could biopsy the involved organs, but in reality, especially in systemic forms, deposits can be found all over the body. Consequently, sometimes the most easily accessible tissue to biopsy, positive in more than 80% of patients with a systemic amyloidosis, is abdominal fat. Now, if this is negative, obviously more invasive biopsies can be considered. 
but if either are positive, the precursor protein type must be determined by mass spectrometry or immunohistochemistry. You could simultaneously undergo further tests relevant to the suspected syndrome. So for example, if you have light chain fibrils that are identified, you should probably have or be checking for M protein and investigating multiple myeloma. Now, the treatment of amyloidosis should focus on the management of its underlying cause. So back to our example, chemotherapy for multiple myeloma causing AL might be a good starting place. However, some subtypes have specific treatment approaches to facilitate the clearance of amyloid deposits. Now, this is best seen with hereditary transthyretin amyloidosis, which is due to an aggregation of misfolded transport protein for thyroid hormone. This notably causes significant cardiac dysfunction. Two new approaches have significantly changed patient outcomes. Firstly, RNA-targeted therapies that interfere with hepatic TTR synthesis like pat -Isirin. Two, agents that improve the stability of the protein structure like TAF amidis. Let's recap with some mnemonics. Systemic amyloidosis is often one heck of a disease causing hepatic injury, endocrine damage, cardiac dysfunction, and renal impairment. Amyloid light chain, or AL, has a couple of classic features that occur roughly 10% of the time, a big tongue, ecchymosis, and peripheral neuropathies. Thanks for watching Townsend Teaching.